Hi, this is Jonathan from mountainwellbeing.com, here to talk with you about iodine, one of the most important minerals that almost everybody is deficient in. Studies show that over 95% of the, of the population in the United States is deficient in iodine. Unless you're eating a lot of seaweed and seafood every day, chances are you are very deficient or almost depleted of your iodine levels. Now, uh, I recommend everybody get their levels tested. But again, unless you eat a lot of seaweed and seafood every day, you can pretty much bet that you are part of that 95% of the population that is very deficient in iodine. So it's one of those minerals that we have to supplement with in order to have the, the optimal levels. Dr. David Brownstein, <clears throat> he calls it, he calls iodine the most misunderstood nutrient of them all. It's so vitally important and almost nobody's getting sufficient quantities Yet doctors don't recommend it. They tell us that we get all that we need from salt. Well, that's, that's incorrect. Um, before I go on, I just want to mention this book. This is called The Iodine Crisis by, by Lynn Farrow. It has the foreword by Dr. David Brownstein. He's considered to be one of the three, quote, iodine doctors in the world that's helping to re, um, reestablish the importance of iodine in our daily diets. Now, there's a reason why there's a sh shattered salt shaker on the cover of this book. The reason for that is because, first of all, this is not the kind of salt we should be eating. Refined salt is not good for our bodies. It causes high blood pressure, can cause kidney stones, it doesn't have any of the minerals that our bodies need, it only has sodium, and it's not very good for us. So, the kind of salt that we should be consuming is raw, uh, unrefined sea salt or Himalayan pink salt. That's the, good, that's the good salt for our bodies. Even if you were consuming this refined sea salt, it is physically impossible to get enough iodine from the salt that you're eating. Um, let, disregard all the, health, all the negative health effects of this salt. Um, literally, you cannot consume enough of this salt to get the iodine that you need. Um, if you buy a box of salt from the grocery store and you open it and use a little bit and put it on the shelf, within you know, a month or two, or three months at the most, 90% or more of the iodine is evaporated from that salt. So even if it comes from the factory rich in iodine, it loses that very quickly. Um, and again, even if it was not losing any of that iodine, it's physically impossible to get your iodine from salt. So there's really no good food sources these days to get iodine. Our soils used to be rich in iodine and many other minerals. South Carolina used to be called the iodine state. It was actually on the license plate. And if I can find this real quick, here it is. Um, this is a picture of the license plate from South Carolina back in 1932. It was called the Iodine State. The reason why they bragged about it being the Iodine State was because the soils in South Carolina used to be rich in iodine, and iodine used to be regarded as one of the most uh, important minerals for our bodies. It was called the universal nutrient. If you went to a doctor and you had an issue, one of the first things they were going to check was your iodine levels. Now, South Carolina wanted to brag about their high, their rich iodine content in the soils because whatever is in the soil is going to get into the plants grown on the soil. And so they marketed their produce from South Carolina far and wide, and then they charged top dollar for it because it was rich in nutrients such as iodine. Well, those days are gone. There's really no soil that's rich in iodine anymore. Um, so unfortunately, it's one of those very few nutrients that we literally cannot get enough of from our diet unless we go out of our way and consume a lot of seaweed and a lot of seafood every day. Um, there's just no way to get enough of it. The average person in Japan consumes 14.2 milligrams of iodine each day. Now here in the United States, the US RDA for iodine is 150 micrograms. So basically, the people in, in Japan are consuming roughly 100 times as much iodine each day through their diet. They specifically cult cultivate a specific type of, uh, out of excuse me, of seaweed that is very rich in iodine, and they intentionally consume that every day to make sure that they get sufficient iodine levels. It's known that the people of Japan have some of the healthiest, um, you know, so they're some of the healthiest people on the planet. Even though they have a lot of radiation problems over there, like Fukushima and, and others, um, they have they they are some of the healthiest people in the world. And a lot of that is due to their daily uh, and consistent intake of, of sufficient iodine. Um, 
We consume 50% less iodine today than we did just a few decades ago, mainly because it's not in the soils anymore and people don't eat a lot of seaweed and, and less and less seafood. Now, I love seafood and I love seaweed as well, but I'm weary of consuming too much of it because I'm not sure how healthy our oceans are anymore. I, I don't feel confident in the, the health and the safety of our oceans and therefore our seafood. I still consume seafood, but I don't want to do take in an, an excess amount of it for that reason. So um, one of the best things you can do is to supplement with iodine. Now we sell a really great iodine capsule. It has 150, oh, excuse me, it has 12.5 milligrams per capsule. And one capsule daily is enough to give you the iodine that, that your body needs. Now this is the iodine supplement that we carry. It is a capsule that has 12 and a half milligrams of iodine per capsule that is considered a daily maintenance dose. Uh, if you, I, I recommend you always take your iodine in the morning because iodine gives you energy and if you take it past lunchtime you might not sleep very well at night. So always take your iodine in the morning. Very few people have sensitivity to the iodine in their stomach so for that reason I think the best time to take it is after breakfast. That way you have food in your stomach and if you are one of those few people that are a little sensitive to iodine it shouldn't be a problem. So I recommend taking one capsule a day in the morning. The only caution is if you have Graves' disease or Hashimoto's disease, you probably need iodine more than anybody, but you should do it under a doctor's supervision. So um, no matter who you are, I recommend first getting yourself tested. I had my, my levels tested about four years ago, and my urine was one parts per million and my saliva was two. They should both be 20 parts per million or higher. So just like everybody else, I was extremely deficient in iodine. So I began taking one capsule a day. Um, I knew I was extremely de depleted and I didn't want to, I wanted to catch up more quickly. So basically I, was, I took, sometimes, some days I took two capsules a day. Occasionally I took three capsules a day. Um, I quickly realized that that was too much for my body. I started getting detoxification headaches and just not feeling so well. It's a positive sign that the iodine is working, but it was basically an indication that I was going too fast. So I backed down to two capsules a day. Most of the time I just took one capsule a day. After about three months, I went and got my levels tested again, and they were my levels of iodine were in the low end of the good range. So then I knew that I was caught up to where I should be, and so ever since then I take one capsule a day. Um, very easy, just pop one after breakfast. You don't have to think about it. You're good on your iodine levels for the entire day. I, I cannot stress enough the importance of reading this book. This book will teach you everything you need to know about iodine, why you need it, how to take it, how to deal with the detoxification symptoms like the headache. Um, they tell you how to pulse dose. They tell you how to drink salt water. They tell you all kinds of tips and tricks that you need to know uh, for supplementing with iodine. Most doctors today do not understand the importance of iodine. They are trained to, to consider iodine as a toxin or, a, or something that we should stay away from when in fact we can't live without iodine. Every cell of the body uses iodine. Now your thyroid's using the most iodine and it, it prefers iodide ending in DE. The next most, uh, uh, the next largest user of iodine in the body are reproductive organs like the prostate or the breasts. Um, those prefer, those parts of the body prefer iodine ending in NE. This product has both iodide and iodine both in there, so it satisfies different parts of the body's different needs. This product also has all the co-nutrients that you need to absorb the iodine, such as selenium, zinc, vitamin B, vitamin C, and what, the, what makes this product superior to all the others that we found on the market is it contains fulvic acid. Anything that you take with fulvic acid gets delivered more deeply and efficiently into the cells of the body. So this is the best iodine supplement that we've found. We used to have a liquid. The quality of the liquid was compromised, so for that reason we only carry the capsules. The capsules work just as well. I actually prefer the capsules because it's just a one-time thing in the morning. You don't have to taste it. It's quick, easy. Um, it's, I, I prefer it personally. So when you first start taking iodine, um, you might not absorb it very quickly because the 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 receptors in the body that absorb iodine are called your symporters. And after being non, not used for, very, very, for a long period of time, 
they kind of dry up like a, the, the analogy is like a dry sponge. If you have a sponge that's completely dry and you start to drip water on it, what happens initially? The water is going to beat up and roll off. But eventually, after you keep putting water on that sponge, it's going to absorb into the sponge and that sponge will then become wet. Well, it's the same thing with the supporters in your body. When you first start taking the iodine, you might not notice any effects. So for that reason, it's not a quick fix. Uh, for me, it took about three months to notice the difference in uh, from supplementing with iodine. My energy levels increased, my brain fog reduced, uh, my hair started falling out at a slower pace, uh, had more energy, um, I just felt better. My now when you first start taking iodine, the iodine is going to displace some of the other halogens in our body. Now halogen, halogens are um, if you look at the periodic table of elements, the second from right hand column is the, is the list of halogens. There's five of them, four of them are important to know for our health. And out of those four, three of them are bad for us, one of them is good for us. Now the one that's good for us obviously is iodine. The other three are fluoride, uh, fluoride which obviously is very bad for us, chlorine, and bromide or bromine. Those are very toxic to our bodies. Everybody has those in your bodies. If you've been drinking tap water at all, you have fluoride and chlorine in your body. And bromide, 100% of the population is toxic with bromide because it's in everything. It's in uh, fire retardant chemicals, which are put into sofas and um, bedding and children's toys and carpeting. And it's basically, it's everywhere. It's in automobiles. It's, it's everywhere. 100% uh, of people tested are toxic with bromide. It's even in some food products. If you drink Mountain Dew, you are drinking brominated vegetable oil. Uh, if you're eating low quality bread from a low quality grocery store, it might have brominated flour in it. So at the very least, make sure you're not consuming and ingesting bromide, but even if you're not, you are toxic with bromide. So when you first start supplementing with iodine, eventually that's going to push out those toxic halogens out of your body. And so you might go through, through a detox period where you feel headache or just not so well. That's a one-time thing. Once you get over that hump, you won't have to go through it again. And it's really a good thing to get those toxic halogens out of the body. So um, just be aware of that. Again, it's more reason to, to own this book. We sell this book on our website for $20. Um, the suggested retail price is, is $23. We only sell it for $20. We don't really make much money off of this book. It's just extremely important that you read it. If you don't get it from Mountain Wellbeing, get it from somewhere and definitely read this book. It'll give you all the information you need to know. Again, it's The, the Iodine Crisis by Lynn Farrow. So, um, in addition to helping to detox the toxic halogens out of the body, um, iodine can help protect us from absorbing toxic radiation. Again, the thyroid is the biggest user of iodine in the body. So if your iodine is saturated with good, healthy iodine, you're a whole lot less likely to absorb radioactive iodine and other radioactive substances. So it's a great protector in that regard. Now, I want to read a list of some of the deficiency symptoms if you are lacking iodine. So the first is weight gain or difficulty losing weight, sluggishness, fatigue, exhaustion, brain fog, confusion, lack of mental clarity, memory loss, lower than normal body temperature. If your hands and feet always get very cold very easily, you're probably lacking iodine. Intolerant to cold, hair loss, dry skin, cracked heels. I didn't mention earlier, but one of the biggest benefits, one of the most noticeable benefits I got from supplementing with iodine was my dry skin went away. I heat my house or my old place. I used to heat with nothing but wood. So in the winter time, it would get extremely dry and my fingertips would split and crack and they would be like that throughout the whole winter. Well, after I started taking iodine, it took about three months to notice the difference, but my dry skin completely went away. My fingertips do not split or crack at all during the winter and I don't even use lotion anymore. I used to use a lot of lotion because my hands were so dry. So my dry skin is a thing of the past. Uh, another symptom of lack of iodine is cracked heels, brittle nails, um, sparse eyebrow hair, especially on the outer third of your eyebrow. That's often an uh, indicator of lacking iodine. Coarse dry hair, constipation, depression, frequent muscle aches or cramps, decreased libido, infertility, candida, difficulty managing stress, poor digestive function, inadequate stomach acid production, which therefore leads to GERD, fibroids, 
fibrocystic breast lumps, abnormal or heavy menstruation, thyroid problems, generally hypothyroid, which is very common in, in the world today because of lack of iodine, but sometimes it's also, uh, it'll, it can also cause hyperthyroidism, but generally it's hypo. Heavy metal toxicity and low immunity, easily catching colds and flus. These are all symptoms of lacking iodine. When your thyroid is saturated with good iodine, your blood is pumped through your thyroid about once every 20 minutes or so, and basically that acts as a filter for microbes and pathogens that are in your blood. So it kind of acts as another, uh, like a secondary immune system. So if you're lacking the iodine in your thyroid, you're not getting that benefit, and so you can easily, more easily catch colds and flus and illnesses that way. And research shows that a lot of breast cancer and breast lumps is most likely caused by a lack of iodine. I'm not making any claims, I'm not a doctor, um, do your own research, but um, the book, The Iodine Crisis by Lynn Farrow, that I highly recommend. It has a lot of women's health information, so especially for women, I definitely recommend the book, but um, really it was one of my favorite natural health books that I've ever read, so uh, I definitely encourage everybody to read that and get more information. I've just touched on the tip of the iceberg here today, giving you a few facts about iodine that you may have not have known about. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be making more videos, but for now, this is Jonathan with Mountain Wellbeing. Hope you have a great day.